thee. I will guide thee. I will guide thee. With mine eyes. All the way. We can say he died for all. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Thank you, Sister Nikki, for such wonderful singing. She's sick, but she still sacrificed the time to and the energy to come and sing for her. She is having a little flu. And um, I, I um, agree with Elder Lima that no matter what then you ask her, she's always willing and ready to bless our hearts and to praise the Lord in singing. And so we want to pray for her that God will strengthen her, God will heal her, and God will cause her to be faithful unto the end. 
so that she too will be saved in his kingdom. Stay faithful, stay true, my dear sister and friend. Uh, I want to thank Sister Osborne for our kind words of introduction. I want to thank Sister Earth and Elder Liber for hosting and uh, Sister, Sister Blair for praying our opening prayer and for Sister Elaine Treasure for uh, popping in and taking over the song service from me or I would have to do it. You know, our other team member is out of Irish and so we, we have to be juggling, all right? But praise the Lord, we have been blessed so far. If you are truly blessed since last week up to tonight at this very moment, type in the chat, thank you, Jesus. If you're truly happy and you are blessed since last Sunday night until this present moment, just type in the chat, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Maxine. Yes, Sister Blair. I see those two. Nobody else is blessed. Oh, have mercy. That means El Alaba, we can go. Sister Mantak, I see that. Sister Bel Nevis, I see. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, four. Yes, I I, <laughs> I see gangs. Jacqueline Willa. Yes, I see them coming in now. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness towards us. Thank you for blessing us with sermons, with songs, with uh, 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 different, different, different blessings. And so this week promises to be even better, my brothers and sisters. The enemy will come and attack from all angles, but we are safe in the arm of Jesus. Amen. Thanks be to God for his blessings. Tonight, our topic for tonight is what happens when you marry the one you love. Then tomorrow night, we're going to look at God's amazing sight that you belong to him. God's amazing sign that you belong to him. So don't you ever forget those topics. And come Thursday night, I can tell you from now, come Thursday night, we're going to look at the topic, what every, what, what every young girl or single girl should know about sex. Uh -huh. That one catches you. That is for Thursday night. All our young people are invited to be here and be with us on Thursday night. So you have tonight, tomorrow night, and Thursday night topic. You will get the others as we go along. Tonight, God is here to send or preach to us a message Oh, yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Glenda. You are here for the first time and you are blessed already. Amen. That means you're going to come again and you're going to bring more friends with you to worship with us. All right? Let's get into the word tonight. But just before, I'm going to ask my praise team, Sister Elaine Treasure, to sing our special theme song tonight. It is no secret. What God can do, what he has done for others, he'll do it for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. Chimes of time bring all the news. Another day is through. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone you? You may have lost. 
for had its red, your courage to renew. Do not be disheartened, for I am news for you. It is no secret what God can do. What is them for others? He do for you. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this evening. We ask you now, Lord, that you will speak your word in no uncertain way. Bless your people, Lord, and cause your people, Lord, to rejoice in you tonight. Oh, Father, we need to hear from you. So speak now, for your servants are hearing. Use me, Lord, and drench me with the Holy Spirit, to speak with authority, power, and clarity. And may somebody yield and cry out to you tonight, is our prayer, in Jesus' name, amen, and amen. Some people, my friends, describe love in so many different ways. Some people say love is a feeling that when you feel it, you feel it and you feel that, okay? Some people say love is fulfilling the law in this way. A woman was married to a man she did not love. So it's, she was forced to marry this man. Maybe like in our days, if a girl should get pregnant, we try to force the man and the girl together so that it don't look so bad, and, and then they live a life of, of misery and beating and agonizing and all these things. 
This woman got married to the man not loving the man. He made her get up every morning at 5 a.m. to cook his breakfast, serve it at 6. He made her wait on him and was exacting in his demands on her time. Her life was made miserable trying to satisfy her husband. Then finally, my friends, this man died and after a few years, she married again. This time though, she married a man who she really loved. So one day, while she was cleaning out the papers, she came across the piece of paper that the, with the rules that the former husband, the first husband, had written out for her to obey. Carefully, carefully, she scrutinized the paper, scrutinized the, 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 the rules that were there. And as she read them carefully over and over, she stopped and thought and realized that she was fulfilling every single one of his demands, same way. But only that this time she realized that she was doing it for the sake of love. Jesus says tonight, my brothers and sisters, like this woman, if you love me, keep my commandments. Love is the true motivation of obedience. If you love somebody, you obey them out of love. Not true. If you care for somebody, you try not to hurt them because you love them. And you try your best to live in a way that both parties are happy and doing well. God wants you to be happy tonight. God wants you to make him happy tonight. And he's saying to you uh, that you ought to, if you love me, you must keep my commandments. There is a general by the name of Lee, General Lee, who sent words to Stonewall Jackson. You would have heard of this great soldier in the United States Army. That the next time he rode in the direction of the headquarters, the commander in chief would like to uh, see him on a matter of no great importance. Jackson, my friends, receiving that message, immediately prepared to leave the next morning. Riding very early, he rode eight miles. To, see, to Lee's headquarters against a storm of wind and snow like what is happening in the United States right now and arrived just as Lee was finishing his breakfast. So you can imagine how early he left to ride that eight miles to blistering storm and wind. Much surprised, General Lee inquired of Jackson, Stonewall Jackson, why? Why you do this? Why would you come through such a storm? General Jackson replied, but you said that you wanted to see me, sir. General Lee's slightest wish for him is a supreme command to Stonewall Jackson. Tonight, God is saying to us, his people, I made you fearfully. I made you wonderfully. Sin has marred you. I paid the price for you. All you got to do is obey me and eternal life will be yours. His wish is our command and we must jump at it and hold on to it and please him because he's deserving to be pleased. Jesus said, if a, if a man loves me, he, must, he will keep my words and gain and, and again, he that at my commandments and keep them, he is that loveth me. Hallelujah. Tonight I want to tell you something. That there's enmity between Satan and God. 
there is enmity of Satan against the moral laws of God. Is this enmity wax more and more bitter as we near the end of this controversy, my friends? It is certain that we are yet to see an all-out onslaught against the moral decalogue, which, while carried on in a most subtle manner, will sweep millions of people into the vortex which has already begun to form. Christendom, my friend, will definitely cleave into two parts, or two sides. The minority will be on the side of God. Amen. The minority will be on the side of God's divine law of commandment. The majority will follow after the great deceiver and thus war against God. Let me tell you something tonight, brethren. You are either on God's side or you're on Satan's side. You're either following the truth or you're following error. You're either on the broad way or you're on the narrow way. You're going to heaven or you're going to hell. There's no middle ground where you can find safety. You are either or either. And tonight the Lord is saying, if you love me, keep my commandments, and you will be secure, and you will be safe with me. My brothers and sisters, before, before the world was, God had his commandments. God had his rules for everyone to follow, to be on his side. At Mount Sinai, after the children of Israel were in bondage for over 400 years, he came back after they came out of bondage. He delivered them, and he was walking with them, and he called up Moses into the mountain just to talk with Moses and to remind the children of Israel about the laws that he had placed in their hearts and all of that. He, 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 he called up Moses, and he delivered the commandments to Moses that he wrote with his very finger. Oh, what an awesome scene that, that would have been on Mount Sinai, my brothers and sisters. God in his glory, in his majesty, in his power. Oh, hallelujah. The angels that escorted him as his bodyguard with, uh, with, with the retinue of angels, with all this kind of glory around them. Can you imagine anything that touched that mountain would spark? It would be like a shining uh, armor that, any, that the sunlight, when it reflects from it, it glittens, my brothers and sisters. It was a grandeur. When God places his law into the hand of Moses, it was a time of grandeur. You get the, 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 you, it, when you watch some shows, it showed you now God's finger when it touched the rock that he, he, he was writing it on. Oh, it caught that rock like a welding torch. Let me tell you something, friends. God is powerful, and he did not allow the other authors of the Bible to write this part. He wrote it himself. To show you that is important for us to obey and to follow. God gave his law, my brothers and sisters, to his people because he loves them. Amen. He gives his commandments to us, his people, because he loves us. He says in Deuteronomy 3, 2 and 3, yeah, he loved his people. His law is based upon love. It is all love, all ten. Leviticus 19, 17 and 18 says love towards, it shows us love towards God and love towards man are the fundamental factors of God's divine law. And I hope you're writing down these texts and read them and ask your questions uh, in the chat at night and we will try to answer all your questions. My brothers and sisters, God's law says, let us look at them. He says, 
thou shalt have no other gods before me. But thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the earth or in heaven, nor bow down thyself for them. For I, God, is a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the father, the third and fourth generation. Take, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. The fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou here he made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. And he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and allowed it. Those four commands are towards God. Those four are towards God. The next six is towards your fellow man. He said, honor your mother and your father. Respect your poor parents. Respect those set above you. Respect everybody you come in contact with. Respect every life. Respect every moving thing. Respect your fellow men. Next thing, he said, uh, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And thou shalt not uh, murder, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. All those six are for, towards you and your fellow men. If you respect your fellow men, you will not, you will, you will respect your people. If you respect your people, you will not steal from them. If you respect your people, you will not take somebody else's whatever. Then if you are, if you are uh, 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 respectful of others, you will not kill each other. Then if you are respectful of each other, you will not tell lies on your fellow man. And if you love it, you will not covet everything you see your neighbor with and kill them for it. You will love them, respect them, and encourage them that they walk in the right way and care for them and look out for one another. If an animal attack your neighbor, you make sure you jump in and help them and get the animal out of them. You know, sit and take picture. You know, nowadays you see people, they meet in accident on the road and before you run and give an helping hand. You take out your phone and your video. The other, one, one of these days I was watching the television and saw the news and somebody, a woman met in an accident. There was gas leaking. There were sparks jumping out of the vehicle and men saying oh the, the vehicle don't catch a fire and they were videoing and all of this and laughing and grinning when the woman needed help and the thing exploded. Brothers and sisters, Time we must have love one for another, care one for another, look out one for another, stop killing one another because God is going to visit these murderers and He's going to visit those who go against your God. How can you say you love God and yet you hate those around you? The gun man who walks around killing people. He, he, he walks with his New Testament Bible, but he wants to go to heaven and, 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 and he's killing people. God said, thou shalt not kill, so if you kill, you're going to hell. But tonight, you can repent of your sins. You can repent of all of your, your iniquities. You can put away all of it and take up Jesus and start walking aright. And, and you will be like a new brand baby that is born that has no sin. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, the character of the Lord tonight, it is perfect. Hey. It is perfect, my friends. The Bible says in Psalm 19, and verse 7, the Bible says, The law of the Lord is perfect, 
converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Let me tell you something, my friends. God's law is perfect. It helps someone to be perfect. It takes you out of the gutter and make you clean. It takes you out of the, 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 the mire clay and sets you free. And when it is finished with you, my brothers and sisters, it says that, 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 that the testimony of the Lord makes you wise. That's why we tell you that God will not keep any dunce. If you come to him, if you see a name and bulla, you will eat it. When you come to God and get to know God, let me tell you something. He will cause you to read and write and be like anybody else, my brothers and sisters. So the law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is, is pure, making wise the simple. The Bible also says that the law, God's law, the Ten Commandments, is true or is the truth, my friends. If you should turn your Bibles with me to Psalm 119, Psalm 119 and verse 142, the Bible says there, and I have my Bible, I have it here. The Bible says, the righteousness is, thy righteousness is as everlasting righteousness, and thy law ha -ha, is the truth. So whatever is written in the word, whatever God writes in his law is truth. It is God's character. God does not tell lies, so everything in there is truth, and it is righteousness, because the one who wrote it is righteousness, my brothers and sisters. And the Bible says that the law is a light in a world of darkness. Read with me, my brothers and sisters, Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. Proverbs 6 and verse 23. The Bible says, For the commandment is a lamp. The commandment is a L-A-M-P, lamp, not L. Not M dot P member of parliament. No, it is a lamp. Yes. And the light and the law is light. And reproofs of instructions are the way of life. So it guides you in life. It opens to you life and directs you how you live in life. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. God's word is truth. Yeah, his commandment is a lamp. And it is also light unto us. It lightens our darkness. It frees up our minds. It untangles our brain and set us right to walk in the light and not in darkness. It is the light of, of the darkness. My brothers and sisters, it is also a perfect law and needs no revising. A lot of persons want to revise God's law. The Catholic Church tried to do it and they did not succeed. They tried to change God's Sabbath. They did not succeed. They tried to do all kinds of things, but God's law can never be revised and because God cannot be revised, revives are revising. No. In Romans chapter 7 and verse 12, the Bible says that, that what? The wages of sin is what? 7 verse 12 of Romans. Romans 7 and verse 12 says, Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. It cannot, it don't want to change. It is good, it is holy, <laughs> it is set aside 
Anything God says holy is set aside for holy use. And God's law is for holy use. He ordains it. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in verse 10, And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. The, for sin take it occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slow me. Wherefore the law is holy, hallelujah, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Ha ha, hallelujah. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. We are deserving to follow God's ways. There's no other way to follow than God's way. It is immensely spiritual. Let us read verse 14 of, of, of Romans 7. It says that, for we know that the law is spiritual. <laughs> but I am carnal, sold under sin. We are captives under sin. We are sold out to sin. But God's law will bring you freedom. I hear some people say, if you are... The one that they call him, whatever, Joseph, one Chinese man on the TV talking to him as a preacher. But if you are under the law, you are worshiping a dead God. But if you are under grace, you are worshiping a living God. Tell him that he's a liar. I keep God's commandment because I serve a risen Savior. I love that risen Savior. And I keep his laws because I am a follower of him. He kept his father's law when he walked upon this earth. And he, uh, he kept his father's ways. And he has given us his law. He has given us his ways. And we must walk in there if we are going to be saved. As long as you call yourself a Christian, you got to keep God's law because it is it that is it we are going to be judged by in the judgment. So you must know it, you must obey it, you must live by it, and you will be saved by it, my brothers and sisters. James 2, verse 8 tells us that God's law is the royal law. <laughs> God's law is the royal law, my friends. It is the law of kings and the law of the universe. You notice that all of God's Ten Commandments are in the laws of every land. You notice it? The only one that is not in it is the Sabbath. God what them try to make them own Sabbath. Trying to change God's will, but it won't change. But everyone they have in there, it doesn't say enough to kill. And if you disrespect your mother, whatever, whatever, all of the six pertaining to you to, to, to your fellow men is in all the laws. So it is the law for the king of the kings of the universe, my friend. That means it's the royal law. James says in James 2 and verse 8. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. Ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. If you follow God's law, you do well, my brothers and sisters. So we are to follow it. It's God's royal law. God is king of kings and lord of lords. God is our supreme king. So it is royal, and we must follow it. My brothers and sisters, this is the character of God's law. It is truth. It is perfect. It is light. It is the perfect law. It needs no revision. It is intensely spiritual. It is the law of the kings of the universe. And tonight, my brothers and sisters, the ten precepts are enduring and eternal. Turn your Bibles to Psalm. 111 and read verses 77 and 8, my brothers and sisters. Psalm 111, verses 7 and 8. It says, The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. He didn't say some. It says all. So if you break one, you're guilty of all of them. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and 
uprightness, my brothers and sisters. So let me tell you, the Ten Commandments is enduring, it is eternal, it is lasting, it is sure, and it is for all of us to follow, my brothers and sisters. God's law was given for a purpose to God's people. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10. And we're going to read verses 12 and 13. You see, my friends, God gave his law to his people for their good, for their good. It says, and now, verse 12 of Deuteronomy 10. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. God will never tell anything to do, man. I hear some people say, God say, I must bless the poor, can call it all right. No, God would never say that. He does not go back on his word, brothers and sisters. God gave his law to reveal sin in your life. If it wasn't for the law, you would know say you sin. If it wasn't for the law, you would know that you are in error. If it wasn't for the law, you would know that you need a savior. If it wasn't for the law, you would know that you need to be baptized and be converted, every one of you. If it wasn't for the law, you would not know that you are accusing Jesus again over and over when you commit sin. Romans 3 and verse 20 tells us that, my brothers and sisters, and I want you to read that text tonight. Tonight we are in a teaching mode. <laughs> we want you to understand and read it in the Word. Romans 3 and verse 20 says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Law make you, the law make you no say of sin. Eh? The law, my friends. Without the law, you cannot be justified. Because it is the law that you measure with to know that you are, just, you are doing right and you are justified with each passing day. Yes, my friend, all, you know, some people say the Ten Commandments done it, but that is the law that you're going to be judged by. That's the law that you will be judged by. Turn your Bibles with me to James chapter 2 again. Go back over there, James chapter 2. And we are going to read verse 12. So speak ye, and so do, that they shall, that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Mm. You think God will not just put you down and live in here anyway, drink your rum and tumble down, and then just carry you go up by heaven. You think him did not make you for just grow on and have trailer road with a woman and I go on the most way. You think him did go and give you all kind of things to do, and then him just go on like say, it's nothing, and you just go to heaven and just walk free. No, it won't work that way. God, like every manufacturer, God made us, he made a manual to keep us. Hallelujah. Our God made us. And just as how the manual for the refrigerator say you must clean it. The refrigerator and how you must plug it in. And how you must put the shelf. You can't do it differently as it's not going to work. It's the same way God gives you his, his character that you will live by it so you can be saved from sin also. Our oh, God is a God of order, a God of perfect order, my friends. And we must walk 
in that perfect order. Christ and his law is sing together. The Bible says, I did not come. He says it in Matthew, in Matthew 5. Verses 17 to 20. The Bible says, my friends, think not that I am come to destroy the law <laughs> or the prophets. I am come to destroy, but not to destroy, but to fulfill. So the law that was written that he came and he saw, he did not dash it away. Sorry, he did not throw it away, but he came and he fulfilled that law. The law came to life in him when he came. It says, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one little shall in no wise pass from the law, till all of the laws are fulfilled, my brothers and sisters. For whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them and say, uh, uh, and the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, he shall in no case enter into the kingdom of God. If you take away anything from God's law, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. If you disobey God's law, you will not enter into his kingdom. So all you people worshiping all kind of things and worshiping all kind of day and following all kind of uh, uh, messengers and going out with them, be careful because God's law is just and true, and it is the one that you will be judged by. My brothers and sisters, God's law enlightens, or it was enthroned in his own heart. It was enthroned in God's own heart, my friends. Psalm number 40. Psalm number 40, verse 7 and 8 tells us, then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written for me. I delight to do thy will, O God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Yes, that's where it is written. God said, me, I have no law upon a stone no more. And then the stones that were there, that you, you must put them before the people so that they can read them and learn them and put them in their mind. Because when God look at the mind, he look at the heart. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Why do you know that you, you, you do wrong? Because it is in your heart. And when you're not doing the right things, he convicts you and speaks to you. But we continue to do it. Let me tell you something. We must be obedient to our God and serve him in all his ways. John chapter 15, verse 10. John chapter 10, 15, sorry. And verse 10, it says, if he love, if he keep my commandments, he shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. He is telling you that what I have done, you ought to do too. If I am God and I come and live in the flesh here so you can understand and know me and see me and follow me, then you must love, if you must keep the commandments as I have kept them and love my father and my father love me. So if you say you, 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 if you keep my commandments, he shall abide in my love. Because the commandment is kept out of love and obedience to our God. Yes. Then John 14, my friends, John 14 and verse 15 tells us, my friends, if you love me, keep my commandments. <clears throat> you think God would then repeat this, keep, if you love me, keep my commandments so many times, if it wasn't important? It is because it is important why he's reminding us 
all the time. But oh, the law is to be kept, my brothers and sisters. Remember, we said it is enshrined in the heart of every Christian. Let me tell you something. We are under the new covenant. It will be so written in our hearts, in our lives, in our minds. It, it is written in us. God writes the law in our hearts. Jeremiah 31, 30 to 31 to 33. Let me tell you something. The writer of Hebrews reiterate this fact in Hebrews 8, verses 10 to 15, and Hebrews 10, 15 to 17. The same law that was engraved upon the tables of stone is written by the Holy Spirit upon the tables of our heart. Hallelujah. Living with Christ will thus enable us to be obedient at each step of the way. It is to be a, a, a life to us, my friends. And if we have life in the law, we will live with Jesus forevermore. Galatians 20, 20. It's the by thing. My Savior goes before me. To higher ground, he'll ever lead me on. Until that day, the last step will be taken until that day. God calls us home. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, would you like to be the, a, a, a blessed man or woman? Huh? The law will make you a blessed man or a blessed woman, my friends. God never wrong. God is always right. Blessed are ye. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law <laughs> of the Lord. You hear that? Those who walk in the, the law, yes, will undergo a heart transplant and will be cleansed from sin tonight. My brothers and sisters, only love can fulfill the law of God. Only love can keep the law of God. Romans 13. Romans 13 and verse 10, my friends. Tells us that love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. It is love why we keep it. Look here. I don't keep the law to be saved, brothers and sisters. I keep the law because I love God. I keep the law because I'm obedient to God and I want to walk in his ways. And how can I know his ways if I don't know his character? If I want to know his character, I have to read the word. So this is his character. He has put his character in this word. And if I read it, I will be cultivated in his character. I will, his mind will be in me. I will be different. People will laugh at me now, but I'm going to laugh the last laugh. My brothers and sisters, my friends, God's commandments are pure. God's commandments are true. God's commandment deserves to be kept. God's commandment is there for us to obey. God is calling us tonight to obedience. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, tonight. The law points out sin. The law is the law of God. The law is God's grace to us. Jesus. <laughs> Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The law points out sin. And if it wasn't the law, we wouldn't know what sin is. And if we don't know what sin is, we don't know what the law is. And if there's no law, we don't need no grace. And if we don't have no grace, we don't need no Savior. And if we don't need no Savior, we don't need to preach the gospel. And if we don't need to preach the gospel, you don't need no preachers. And if you don't need no preachers, you don't need any members. And if you don't have no, no members, you don't need to go to heaven because every star, no, there will be no starry less crown in heaven. Every crown will have stars in it. And so we must preach the thus 
saith the Lord, my brothers and sisters. This is God's command to us. We must follow it to the very T, to the very dot. We must follow it in every way, every walk, and every step that we take. Tonight, my friends, Jesus is your friend. Jesus is your friend. So many of you are happy that Jesus is your friend tonight. As usual, I want you to open your cameras tonight, your video cameras. And I want you to raise those hands after the questions, brothers and sisters. I need you to show Satan that God's law can be kept and God's law is what you abide by and you will obey God until the end and until Jesus comes. Let me see those cameras open tonight. I want, Jesus wants to see them. I see Sister Boo that it is up already and I don't even ask her a question yet. If you, if, are you happy tonight that Jesus is your friend? Raise your hand. Amen, I see those hands. Hey, 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 hey. You, you are Jesus, Jesus' is friend when you keep his commandment. How many of you want to be the friend of Jesus tonight? See my two, and I tell you how I want to put up my two foot though. Amen. We have them in a Satan face. We have them. We have the them. We have the them. Show him say your God commandment keeping people. Hallelujah. Jesus says all his friends are obedient to him and they should eat the food of the land. Tonight, my friends, God wants to plant his love deep in your heart. His love will make you willing and obedient. How many of you tonight wants Jesus' love to be planted in your heart? See the hand in there. Lord, you see those hands tonight. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for your reminder that your law is to be obeyed. Your law is important for saving our lives. Oh, Father, we want to walk in your ways, but the things that we should do, we find ourselves not doing. And the things that we should not do is the things we find ourselves doing. We ask you tonight to rewrite these laws upon our hearts. Rewrite our mind, O oh God, that we will listen to you. We will work with your commands. And Lord, we have learned tonight that these are the same laws that we will be judged by. And if we are not obedient to them, we are going to find ourselves outside the city. But Lord, tonight we are recommitting ourselves to you. We are recommitting our will to you. We are giving you our hearts tonight. Have mercy upon your people again one more time. Save your people, Lord. Please, Father, let those who are listening on here tonight, on Zoom, on Facebook, on YouTube, my brothers and sisters, let, Lord, my God, just seal them for time and eternity. Set their hearts at ease. Write your laws upon their heart. And, oh, God, let everyone obey you. Those who were not keeping your commands and following the laws of men, they will put down the laws of men and take up the laws of God. Tonight, Lord, I give you your people. I consecrate your people to you. I give them to you, Lord. I say, save them in the name of Jesus. Rescue them, oh, Father. And when you come, may all of us be saved into your eternal kingdom, we ask. In no other name than in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. I'm going to ask my singing evangelist. Sister Treasure. To sing two verses of take the name of Jesus with you. Child of sorrow and of all. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it there, then wherever you go. And my brothers and sisters, I want you to go into the chat. I want you to sign up. You're going to keep us command. You're going to follow this way. You want, if you have black sin, type, just tick the thing. I want to recommit my life to the Lord. If you are, if you are not a Christian and you want Bible study or you want to ask questions, 
uh, take the one that says that you want to use it from the pastor, the evangelist, or the Bible counselor. If you want to be baptized and, 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 and before this crusade and this series, and I want you to take, I want to be baptized so we can start the study with you. And if there's any other thing in your life, brothers and sisters, type it at Allah that we can follow up with you and work with you. Please, brothers and sisters, sign up for the Christian Jubilee. Go in the chat and scroll down and you'll find that right there. I want to put it up so you know for his name. You'll see it. And then you'll see it. I want you to write up those cards right now for me and then we will do our benediction. My friend, after Sister Treasure, we we'll sang two verses of Take the Name of Jesus with you. Take the name of Jesus with you. Can hope all over the world. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it there you go. Precious name. Oh, 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 and joy of heaven. Joy of heaven. Precious name. Oh, sweet, oh, 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 and joy of heaven. Oh, yeah. At the name of Jesus, how oh, we in for space at his feet. Oh, yeah. Before kings in heaven will cry oh, on me. Oh, Hallelujah. And our journey is complete. Oh, yeah. Oh, sweet, oh, 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 and joy of heaven. Heaven, joy of heaven, yeah. precious name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Papa, and joy of heaven. Thank you, my sister. Has everybody signed up a card tonight? Everybody signed a card tonight? Please, brethren, don't be disobedient. Sign up a card for Jesus tonight. Please sign up for the Christian Jubilee. We have to keep his laws. We have to be obedient to his laws. We have to follow his ways or we will not be sick. Bless you tonight. Love you tonight. And may you follow and see the rest of the Savior Jesus Christ. The Father, the Father, the rest of the United States. Amen. 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 Until then, let us be faithful. Let us be true. See you tomorrow evening, same time. Invite a friend, share the link, and come. Let us have a wonderful time in lifting up the name of Jesus.